I'd like to talk to you about cladograms today. Cladogram can be a very important tool for an evolutionary biologists. A cladogram represents the best hypothesis for the relationship between organisms. So if you look at this cladogram here, the information that I glean from this cladogram is I can tell which organisms are more closely related to each other. I can tell what traits I expect to see in certain organisms, identify true evolutionary groups between these organisms. I can locate common ancestors and unique ancestors between organisms on this cladogram. The cladogram, or an evolutionary tree, at the very top, at the end of the branches, you see the descendants. At the base of the tree, you see the common ancestor. Descendants evolve from common ancestors. Common ancestors give rise to descendants. So for example, you and your siblings would be descendants of your most recent common ancestor, which would be your parents. Other common ancestors you have between you and your siblings are your grandparents, your great-grandparents, your great-great-grandparents. The way you read time on this cladogram, at the bottom is the past, and as you move up vertically, time moves forward. We can focus on just part of the tree, and I want to point out to you that we have descendants W and Z. You see that ancestral line, that's where the common ancestor existed, that eventually gave rise to W and Z. And then where the tree starts to branch apart, that is a speciation event. Recall speciation is the evolution of new species. So within that ancestral group, there was some set of mutations that rendered those members of each group a different species from each other. That brings us to this idea of common ancestors and unique ancestors. So at the bo bottom of the tree, you can see the common ancestor to X, Y, and Z. As you move up the tree, you can see the common ancestor to only Y and Z. Now there are also organisms that are unique ancestors that are not shared between Y or X. For example, the unique ancestor to Z is up here. Show me where you would see a unique ancestor to Y. Show me where you would see a unique ancestor to X. Now I think it's time, let's add in some of organism names so this seems more real. I want us to now move on to talking about how do we figure out which organisms are more closely related. Well recall the past is at the bottom of the tree and the top of the tree is the most recent in time. So if you think about if you wanted to know if the chimp, lizard, new sunfish, which organisms are more closely related to each other, well let's think about this exercise. If you have a sibling who is your most recent common ancestor between you and your sibling, as opposed to you and your cousin? Well, if we look back in time, the most recent common ancestor between you and your sibling are your parents. Now compare your most recent common ancestor between you and your cousin, and that would actually be further back in time, and that would be your grandparents. So the way we, we apply the same thinking to cladograms, so the way you figure out if organisms are more closely related to each other is you look for the most recent common ancestor and you see how recent it is. All right? So which organisms, which organisms are the most closely related according to this cladogram? Pause. Think about it. Unpause when you're ready for the answer. Well, according to this cladogram, the most closely related organisms are the lizard and the chimp. And because if, if you look at its most recent common ancestor, it's right here, and look that that's very recent in time. But if you compare the chimp, for example, with the sunfish, well, find its, where is its most recent common ancestor between chimp and sunfish? Pause, unpause when you have the answer. And yes, you see is this green dot here is the most recent common ancestor between the chimp and the sunfish back in time, but compare the most recent common ancestor between chimp and lizard, and look at that common ancestor existed more recent in time. The first cladogram you saw, you actually saw traits on the cladogram. And so you may see another version 
uh, the Cloud Graph where traits are listed. So for example, to figure out what traits you would expect to see in an organism, well, it's very it's very similar to figure out where the most where the common ancestor between those organisms are. So the thinking is that there was a common ancestor who had certain traits and passed down those traits to its descendants. So for example, all the organisms on this cladogram, we would expect to have jaws. So if you look at the bottom of this tree, you see the jaw trait. And then the common ancestor down there had jaws and passed jaws down to the sunfish, the newt, the lizard, and the chip. Which organism would you expect to have four legs or are tetrapods? Pause, unpause when you're ready to discuss. And yes, if the common ancestor here at tetrapods existed, it would have passed down four legs down to newt, lizard, and chimp. Now this brings us to the idea of what we call a monophyletic group. A monophyletic group, there is a common ancestor and all the descendants of that common ancestor would represent a monophyletic group. If you leave off any of the descendants, then you no longer can say it's a monophyletic group. All of the organisms on this cladogram, I would say, are monophyletic. Well, I look at the most recent common ancestor between all four, and then I trace the tree to see if I left off any descendants in that group. So if I look down here, here's my common ancestor between all four, and who are the descendants of this common ancestor? It includes the sunfish, new lizard and chimp. So the sunfish, newt, lizard, and chimp are monophyletic. But for example, chimp and newt would not be considered monophyletic. Well, because what do I do? I find the most recent common ancestor between newt and chimp. So I go back in time. And then I look for all the descendants of that common ancestor. Did I leave any descendants off? Well, yes. In my original group, I did not mention lizard. So a lizard is a descendant of the common ancestor that's shared between newt and chimp. And therefore, new and chip cannot be considered a monophyletic group. Well, I want you to think about, can you identify all of the monophyletic groups on this cladogram or evolutionary tree? I want you to circle them on your notes, in your notes, and then unpause when you're ready to discuss. According to this cladogram, we have one, two, three monophyletic groups. I would add all the individual species along, right? So just the chimp by itself is monophyletic, just the lizard, just the newt, and just the sunfish, because you can find a common ancestor shared between all of them and just include that particular organism. 